Voters have been saying this for quite a long time. The reality is that the Democratic elites are mostly late to acknowledge these age and ability issues. Hey guys, I'm on a press tour this week, but we didn't want you to miss this clip by Jake Tapper, who's like kind of sort of trying, maybe he's not that horrible or he kind of is. Well, you decide. Today, President Biden called into one of his favorite TV shows, Morning Joe on MSNBC, and he railed against what he called the elites. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites. Now, I'm not talking about you guys, but about the elites in the party who they know so much more. President Biden seems to be trying to frame what's going on right now as the average voters who want him versus the elites of the Democratic Party, donors and lawmakers and opinion makers, many of whom have serious concerns about Biden's ability to be the candidate and have called for him to step down after that debate performance that let's call baffling. In reality, 72 percent of voters say that they believe President Biden is too old. That's according to CNN's most recent polling. Voters have been saying this for quite a long time. The reality is that the Democratic elites are mostly late to acknowledge these age and ability issues compared to the rest of the public. The elites have been forced to reckon with it after the debate just 11 days ago. Look at my career. I've not had many of those nights. It was a terrible night and I, I, I really regret it happened. But the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. how, how can you assure you're gonna be on, on you know, faith that can intervene on your way to go to you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea I'm too old. The fact of the matter is, how can you assure you're going to be out on, you know, on your way to go, you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea that I'm too old. Keep in mind, that soundbite is supposed to be reassuring to those Democratic supporters who have gone wobbly. Many Democratic officials with whom I've spoken are worried that President Biden and his family and his inner circle appear to be in complete denial, not just about whatever might be wrong with him, but the state of his candidacy right now. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. He doesn't think he did? After facing increasing pressure to demonstrate in public an ability to take questions and respond cogently for a lengthy period of time live about what he wants to do with the United States, his message, his plans, his policies, the president and his team have not held a press conference to demonstrate just that. He continues to do what he has done sparingly in the past, a short tape sit down with an anchor, in this case, George Stephanopoulos of ABC News. But before the president did that, he called into a couple of black radio stations where he said, among other things, this. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman, mm -hmm. served with a black president. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of the, all the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together, we, there's nothing. Look, this is the United States of America. The first, he's proud to be the, the first black woman. Not coherent. And even then, we later found out later from the radio host that the Biden campaign had given her a list of questions to ask President Biden. That is a huge no-no in journalism, and the host was fired for it. But it remains quite telling that in the Biden campaign's efforts to show that the president has not missed a step, his campaign felt the need to feed questions to the hosts for a call-in radio interview. And the president still, even then, failed to deliver in many of his answers. Now, many elected Democrats are expressing concern about this answer, too, although it was quite coherent. George Stephanopoulos asking him how he would feel if he ultimately loses to Donald Trump, which polls have suggested he, he will. I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do, that's what this is about. As long as he gave it his all and did the goodest job he could do. Stay right there, people, because the only one of its kind, this prescription contagion emergency kit from the wellness company, provides you with a carefully selected assortment of effective medications 
for bird flu, COVID-19, and other respiratory illnesses, ivermectin, HCQ, z Tamiflu, and budesonide, along with a nebulizer, so you can rest easy knowing that you have emergency meds on hand, along with a guidebook for safe use. Backed by research from experts like Dr. Peter McCullough, the wellness company's Contagion Emergency Kit is a must-have. Order today at twc.health slash Ruben. Code Ruben saves you 15% at checkout with the wellness company. 